Consider the irony where the very laws of one's own realm can unwittingly lead to their own death. The demise of royalty has often been quite questionable and mysterious, but the fate of Queen Sunanda Kumariratana in the 19th century is particularly striking for its tale of avoidable tragedy, standing out as a poignant chapter in history. In the ancient kingdom of Siam, which we now know as modern-day Thailand, a law cast in stone forbade commoners from touching members of the royal family. Royal blood was not allowed to mingle with those known as commoners. Sunanda Kumariratana was the daughter of King Mongkut and the queen consort, first wife of King Chula Longkorn. She was 19 years old and expecting her second child, a baby boy, after her already two-year-old young daughter, Karnabhorn Bejraratana. It was the fateful month of May in the year 1880, when Sunanda and her daughter boarded a boat to the royal family's bountiful Bang Pa in summer residence, just outside of Bangkok. When the boat, carrying the pregnant queen and the princess, reached the Chao Phraya River, the servants and guards deemed it necessary to transfer the queen and her daughter to a supposedly sturdier vessel, capable of withstanding the river's treacherous currents. Yet, little did they know what awaited them. The currents were stronger than the usual daily flow. As they attempted to navigate the tumultuous river, the boat was overwhelmed by the river current, causing it to flip over. Unbeknownst to the guards, tragically, Sunanda could not swim, and her pregnancy pushed it beyond her capabilities. The princess could not swim either, she was far too young. She hadn't even learned to walk yet. Due to the unforgiving strictures of Siamese law, those who dare lay a finger on the royal family could lose their life as punishment. Allegedly, saving a person who was drowning in the river was also associated with misfortune. The river shall take what it takes for the purpose in which it chooses. Servants, guards and onlookers watched helplessly, paralyzed by fear from the shore as the queen and the princess drowned. Nobody wanted to risk offering help. Everyone followed the lead of the main guard, who stood and did nothing. Some bystanders took it upon themselves and threw buoyant coconut into the water, hoping Sunanda could use them to stay afloat, but their efforts proved futile. The dark waters swallowed the royal fleet, whole. Soon the word got back to the king. At one fell swoop, he had lost his wife, his daughter and his future son. He was devastated that there was nobody permitted to help them. Everyone was forbidden to touch. Regardless, King Chulalongkorn proceeded to imprison the main guard who did not give any orders to attempt a rescue. As he grieved the death of his beloved spouse, the one he loved most of all, he arranged for one of the most expensive funerals in the history of this Asian kingdom, paying a solemn tribute to the queen who had met her untimely demise due to the very laws that governed her existence. The queen's death reverberated as a significant juncture in Siam's history, signaling the beginning of the end of the absolute monarchy that had ruled the country for centuries. King Chula Longkorn, profoundly impacted by the loss of his wife, initiated far-reaching reforms aimed at modernizing the nation and curtailing the authority wielded by the monarchy. Despite the implementation of these reforms, the legacy of Queen Sunanda endures in Thailand, serving as a poignant symbol of the nation's turbulent history and the profound sacrifices endured by its royal lineage. Today, the Queen is remembered as a tragic figure, a victim of the outdated system that valued tradition over human life. <laughs>